Hello and welcome to the podcast. Good to be here. Thank you. Fitzy is present. Whipper and Hello, me. Hello, present. Kate here. Ritchie. Um, today on the podcast, we're going to talk about the far too personal trainer. Oh, yeah. This erotic novel that you didn't ask for it, but you might just need it in your Christmas stocking. Of course you do. You do. Um, it is on. It is on sale. Head to the website. I think there's even a twenty percent discount at yeah, the moment. Code it's word right. is Milko. Oh, that's um, <laughs> Sally that's Fletcher's not nice. uh, it's not nice. I imaginary think, friend. I think it's kind of cute, and I'm glad it has nothing to do with the book. Um, we need a voice for the audio yep, book. Sure, uh, sure. Some people like to listen in the car or while they're doing their shopping. Well, you're the project manager. What have you got? I'm I'm all over it, guys. I've got a couple of audition tapes, a few in fact, and I'm going to go through them in the podcast today. I love that. The Fitzy and Whipper with Kate Ritchie Podcast. Anyone see the Grand Prix? It was oh, going off. Huge. Big lineup, two of stars. Um, well, it, the, Formula One is, I mean, with Drive to Survive, it's back. And the Las Vegas Grand Prix is only going to get bigger and bigger. Huge stars there. We were talking about this last week. Daniel Ricciardo's quite large over there to the point that, that the MGM Grand and also Bellagio had this as well. They had the Shoey Bar. I didn't know. It was $135 for a cocktail out of a shoe a racing shoe but how's this they actually put a liner into the shoe whip you can see it there yep. and the unfortunate thing people weren't sculling out of the shoe you basically just oh, yeah. you drank it out of a straw I mean that's I mean <laughs> uh, the real man's version is getting the, rid of the plastic liner that guy is drinking out of a straw that's not a shoe that is not a shoey at all and it cost him $135 look at him he's got his gear on his Ferrari top is the MDG you'll be able to answer this is the track throughout the main city of Vegas yes so there's you're driving in and out of the building the, sort of thing well the, the Vegas strip which is around two miles yeah the track takes up one mile of that so you go straight yeah. It's a long straight. All the major casinos. It's amazing. Yeah, it's a great idea. It's only, that that will get bigger and bigger, and every all the celebrities, mm-hmm. sporting stars from all over the states will be there every year for that one. Um, actually, one person that was there, she was DJing, and it went crazy. Was Paris Hilton? Oh my God! <laughs> was she at the Sphere? So um, where was she DJing? This was an official Formula One Las Vegas Grand Prix party. The unfortunate thing was, <laughs> have a look at the video here when she arrived. Is she dressed? as one of the drivers. Yeah, she's got her own Hilton race suit on. Oh she God. arrived, look, she takes her glasses off because there's no one there. For oh, her. shivers. <laughs> now, what I oh. would do first is take your glasses off and have a look if there's a crowd there. There's no one there. They're front row tables. So she's at the Virgin Hotel in Las Vegas. Has Branson got his own hotel in did Vegas as well? Up, did she turn up too early? Yeah. Like, so, no, this was the thing. What is it? Five so, o'clock in the afternoon. <laughs> Someone actually said oh. she came in late and was still early. <laughs> <laughs> what a great line. I mean, what's interesting, the article then goes on to show sort of more of a party scene where there are actually people there. Yeah. But it looks like some the warm-up guys come in and go, OK, can we just get you guys, the 30 people here, can you just come to the front? We need to get a couple of shots. She's going to, you know, there's... Oh, man. Other people were saying as well, oh, my God, as she takes her glasses off, you can just tell in her mind she was saying, my agent is getting fired. And there's a bloke sitting there in black tie. Now, uh, I would suggest <laughs> he's even confused. And a pair of volleys on. And a pair of volleys. He's relaxed but very professional up top. Uh, he's Paris, she just doesn't have the same... Does she the glamour what? anymore? Oh. I mean, if people aren't... If you're rocking up to watch Paris Hilton DJ... I suppose you've got to ask a few questions on yourself, don't you? Team trip, I reckon, because I know we'll be able to get in. What if you could book your hotel now and choose to pay when you get there? With thousands of flexible booking options in select stays, you're only a what if away from your next holiday. Book on the What If app. What if? It's Aussie for travel. Project manager, over to you. Thank you very much. I'm really throwing myself into this uh, gig, Fitzy. It's taking up, up a lot of my time. I don't usually it's... dedicate any this much time to anything post-show. Um, the erotic novel, The Far Too Personal Trainer, uh, which you can buy, Kate, at thefartoopersonaltrainer.com. 20% off today. The code word you need to type in is Milko. 
you, you just have that to get okay. Yeah, no. For home it's, kind of, it's kind of cute, but it's not clever mm. and it's not funny and it's not original. M I L K O for 20% <laughs> off at thepersonaltrainer.com. Um, look, we're, yesterday we chatted about levels of publicity. We really need to get yeah, you sure. out and about, maybe okay. on the, the TV shows, the yep. Today Doing Show. Doing some t- TV the morning, today. Yeah, Thank the you. morning show. Take Tommy with you. He can dress up as the, or not oh, dress the up guy. as the censor, just be, be the censor. But one of the things that we haven't really covered yet is. Um, Yes, we love a hard copy of the book, but I think that we even had a guy on air yesterday who said he was going to buy two copies in case one got messed up. So maybe yeah. if you don't want the hard copy, you might go for the audio book mm-hmm. gotcha. version. Um, can I just jump in? Yes. Kate got a message yesterday from, um, uh, let's call him Ryan, who purchased the book, not the Ryan sitting across from me. He said, hi, I've ordered a soft cover, but given the nature of the book, I expected it to be a hard cover. Okay, Ryan. Mm. Also um, not original f- or funny. <laughs> really good to you, Ryan. Um, it's going to be very important yep. to get the right voice to, to do the I'm reading sure of the, the, audio of the book. book. Do you go the deeper voice? I think you've got to go a deeper voice. You reckon? Masculine, don't you? But yeah, I'm, I'm thinking about- masculine, a little bit mysterious, but also fun. We had Oscar, the 16-year-old that I heard at a cafe. Oh, Remember yes. his deep voice? Really you should get deep him in voice. for a reading. Okay, Richie, it doesn't... I mean, it's a 26-year-old guy who's a personal trainer, but that doesn't mean the read has to be a male, does it? No, well, I didn't even really... I don't know. I mean, you're the project manager in charge of this audio book. I think the world is very different to what it used to be. Mm, I mean, mm. I think anybody can put their hand up. We put it out on the socials yesterday. Get involved if you think that perhaps you are the voice. I have trawled through so many. Great, okay. I I thought I'd bring you maybe just the top three, because you're a busy guy. You're an author. You're probably penning book number two. Yeah. Um, So I've got just a snippet, almost like an audition of three different voices, and I thought we could go through them this morning if you're happy with that. Yeah, great, great. Um, Makes sense. Okay, firstly, we have a guy called Nick from Caring Bar, and this is his... Hi, Nick. Hi, guys. How are you going? Just quickly, uh, Nick, tell me why did you put yourself forward to uh, audition for the voice of the audiobook? Oh, you know, I've been a, I've been a PT for a few years now, so oh, I know the ins and outs of the industry. That helps. You no, know, I'm the I'm the real deal, uh, and I think most importantly, I train Mrs. Traffic Pig. Oh, oh do you, you're uh, Matt DeGroote's wife, Bronte. Do Bronte. you train her, Nick? Oh. I sure do. Well, this is great. This is oh, interesting because I, I think MDG was saying that they were having a read in the car and the conversation <laughs> turned to, well, what is it really like when you have a personal trainer? Oh, my God, Nick. So you work very closely with Bronte, of course. Oh, I do, I do. I train her twice a week. Oh, so um, quite hands-on. Yep. Oh, I wouldn't necessarily say that. No, no, no. No, you know Nick, no don't, she, don't worry, Matt. You're safe. What, are, what is she good at? What is she? What are her strengths in the gym? Uh, she's a really good runner. Um, okay. so she's a, she's an amazing runner. She um, she's been running she's away. Well, from I know. I was going to say, not not that good. She couldn't get away from old MVP. <laughs> oh, Do you know what? That's though, how sick. annoying that we didn't use your legs on the front cover of the book. Instead, we went with Matt DeGroote's legacy. <laughs> oh, <laughs> uh, thanks for giving us a call. We are about to hear your audition, so let's uh, take it away, Nick. Okay. Moving her fingertips from the top of my jeans and back across my chest, I pray she knows where the buckle on my belt is. Wow, what a tease. Her hands stop lower and lower each time before circling my belly button with her index finger. Oh no, what if there's fluff in it? Draping her body further on top of me, she puts her hands on my shoulders. Don't make a sound, she whispers in my ear. Oh, my God. Oh, I, could, I couldn't bad. help but pitch you with Bronte. Um, that's <laughs> why. Uh, that's what I kept thinking. That was pretty is that, good. Is that the way he, he speaks to her on yeah. the gym floor? Does he whisper um, into her ear? I think he's very, he's, he's very strong. But we also, just to mix it up a little, we thought we'd uh, speak to... You've spoken to Michelle before. Oh, well, Michelle the, the Minx. Michelle the Minx is here, and she also <laughs> is going to uh, you know, put forward her audition. Welcome to the show, Michelle. Thank you. Michelle, we met you the other day when we found out that you'd been having an affair. We'd been having an affair for 15 yeah, years. Yeah, that was, a, that was an early morning call. Mm. You can't talk about this Oops, later in the show. Sorry about that. <laughs> Michelle, we love you. I'm excited to hear your audition. Let's have a listen. Thank you. Moving her fingertips from the top of my jeans <laughs> back across my chest, I praise she knows where the buckle on my belt is. Wow, what a tea. Her hand stops lower and lower each time before circling my belly button 
with her index finger. Oh, oh no, what if there's fluff in it? Draping her body further onto me, she puts her hand on my shoulder. Don't make a sound, she whispers in my ear. Oh, oh my God. Yeah. I mean, it's Mich- Mich- strong. Michelle's the standout yeah. for me. Because if Michelle can't do it, Pauline Hanson can. Oh, oh, no. Michelle, that was lovely. Thank you so much for that. Oh, wow. That's all right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love Michelle. Who else? She loves the sneak peek. We also have Indy from Waverton. Good okay. morning, Indy. Good morning, guys. How are you? Good, Indy. Very are you a well. personal trainer? Do you have a history of doing a, are you a physically fit guy? Look, I'm phys- I reckon I'm pretty physically fit, but I'm not a personal trainer. I'm actually a voice actor. Oh, oh okay. you're a professional. Oh, my gosh. So this is a... Yeah, and I know I know how uh, serious of an author the Whipper is. So, okay. you know, he doesn't he doesn't want the character to be read. He wants the character to come alive. Okay. Wow. Ooh. Okay, this is what we need. We okay. need someone who is... Uh, well, uh, well, they know what they do in this area. So let's have a listen to Indy's read. Moving her fingertips from the top of my jeans and back across my chest. I pray she knows where the buckle on my belt is. Wow, what a tease. Her hand stops lower and lower each time before circling my belly button with her index finger. Oh no, what if there's fluff in it? Oh, draping her body further on top of me, she puts her hands on my shoulders. Don't make a sound. She whispers into my ear. Oh my goodness. Kate, why did you just light up a cigarette? No, I didn't. Can we put I Indy just wanted to keep reading. Can we put Indy and Michelle the Minx together? <laughs> oh, that would be oh amazing. Oh my God, we oh. need to sign off this today. Indy, that was. I think that was very strong, and I quite like the. I mean, lovely projection, but kind of quiet, but heavy, like heavy breath. Do you want to chat to Indy off air after nine no, o'clock, no, Kate? No, no, it's so fine. We can um, do it here. Make the call on this, Kate, because we. Am I need doing to... it now? Yeah, yeah let's do it. Um. Well, I think Indy wins Indy hands has to do down. It. Oh, Indy, we need to get you in the booth. We need five hours of your time. <laughs> Let's do it, guys. Great. Go He's got it. You are great, well Indy. Done. Um, okay. I'll be there on the day just to <laughs> tweak and do a little bit of um, direction. Oh, sorry. And Michelle the Minx, I'll have a reading with you one-on-one uh, at another time. Oh, wow. Oh, definitely. <laughs> the Fitzy and Whipper with Kate Ritchie Podcast. The jury is out about this mother. Hmm? Do you oh, want to talk about yourself? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> the jury is out. We've been saying that for a while. Well, there's been a little bit of debate about my um, my mothering. I quite like this story because, of course, heading into Christmas, I mean, even just the popularity of our pay your bills. Oh yeah. Um, oh, segment massive. and 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 giveaway. Everybody's looking for every extra dollar in the lead up to yep. Christmas because you don't you you don't just have the normal expenses. You've got everything piling up, and you're also going to have to buy the kids Christmas presents. Okay. This mum's got a fantastic idea and I don't think there's anything wrong with it. Tell me what you think. She has decided, after going into her son's room and opening the cupboards mm. and realising he has so many toys in there that he doesn't even so play with. junk. They course. don't even know the toys are there until you decide to throw them out and then all of a sudden they become That's their right. favourite toy. Favorite you toy can't throw out there. Slimer. We, threw, we wanted to throw out Huey's Slimer from Ghostbusters the other day. He said, Dad, I still really love Slimer. Yeah, but you don't when, use yeah, it. Yeah, when was the last time he played? Played yeah, with it. Yeah, that's right. When did you slime anyone last? Do you we know what I mean? We need a spring clean, mate. Slime has gone. So on Christmas Day, uh, often things will get out of hand and lunch will happen and everyone will go their separate ways and some gifts aren't even opened. So what she's decided to do this year, because she thinks her son has the memory of a goldfish, she's re-gifting some of her son's uh, unopened presents and toys he has already opened yeah. back to him for Christmas. <laughs> To, so, to, so to, to see if he notices? Not even to see if he notices, but as a way of saving a bit of cash. He hasn't played with them. Yeah. He probably doesn't remember they're there. And in actual fact, if the, if the fad or the you know the trend in the toy hasn't changed, it's like Christmas all so over again and you've saved be, the money. He's going to be opening his presents Christmas morning going, Deja vu. Deja yeah, this is, <laughs> I feel like... It's, yeah. Hang on a minute, I've got this puzzle. Well, I've, got no, strawberry, I've already got strawberry cheesecake. And what is it? Shortcake. Shortcake. Oh, I um, love strawberry shortcake. I, I don't have an issue with that because I think the less plastic we can throw into our house, the better. And I've said, we had a huge fight on the group family chat yesterday mm-hmm. about 
presents for kids okay. because my little sister has just uh, she's got two kids now yep. and we've said no presents for the kids this Christmas oh. they don't need them there's enough stuff and enough junk oh, I don't know oh, so you have to the have siblings. something yeah, so open the the over she day. piped up and said hang on a minute but I've got kids now and for the last ten years I've been giving you guys presents and went don't care oh. so I've said to my family yeah. to, to mum and dad yeah. that if you want to give presents to the kids BHP they ne- shares no they yep. need to be vouchers or they need to be experiences so they can go and spend them on exactly what they want yep. or well, they can go West and enjoy Field something voucher, and you yep. can experience yourself buying some toys no you can go to, you can go to <laughs> if you get a Westfield voucher then you might end up at Rebel Sport when you decide there's something you want that's actually out there not just a badminton set that we'll never use I wondered if you were going to bring up the badminton oh, set badminton because set. in the office the other day all Whit was Furious. complaining about speaking of Scrooge yeah. um, is that the sister you're one mm. of your sisters who I haven't met wanted to gift the kids badminton I said you no. said absolutely no, no and it arrived anyway yeah that's the thing she He's, said oh, I thought they'd still love it I told you we don't love it you, you've got a backyard the kids would love that get a totem tennis we pole have, we have that oh. we have so many of them you can't do everything you've got to limit the ideas and the presents I do agree because I think sometimes the more stuff you have mm. the more confusing it is it is don't give me choice and if you only give the kid one thing like the totem tennis pole they're going to be the best totem tennis player yeah. out there alright I'm getting your kids a winery tour and okay. if you don't want it I'll <laughs> <laughs> the Fitzy and Whipper with Kate Ritchie Podcast. We absolutely adore this man. We do. He's got a brand new um, television series out called Mirror Mirror Are You Well? It premieres tonight, 7.30 on Channel 10. And it focuses on the wellness industry, which is apparently worth $5 trillion. It's the magnificent Todd Sampson. Toddy. Good morning. Toddy, Good morning. I'm trying to work out. Did Channel 10 say when you came up with this idea that you were on the psychedelics or you take them during the show as part <laughs> of the experiment? Do you know what? We had some issues with the time, uh, 7.30, being on psychedelics because it's not often that you'll see a host who is Todd's been on the burning psychedelics man again. Uh, hosting the show and explaining what psychedelics did does. You, did wow. you, did you Hi- do that? Hi- Hiawatha? I- Ayahuasca, yeah. It was, it was, do, you, do you know what's crazy about it, though? There's a video going around now with my injury from the leech therapy. The yes. Yeah. Uh, and I, where I was bleeding. Two days after that leech therapy, we flew to Oregon to do ayahuasca. Wow. So I'm on ayahuasca, which is this sort what of is it? hallucinogenic... Um, psychedelic. Well, you used come out in the of your body to hear. You to, come, you come out of your body. No, so I am totally tripping out, leaking blood what? from the leeches. But were you? Uh, were you really leaking blood oh, from the God. leeches, or was it the psychedelics? Was it, was it the drugs? I just all I was thinking about the whole time I was on psychedelics was Miranda Kerr. Damn you, Miranda Kerr! You got me into this leech therapy. Yes, <laughs> she, that was that was her idea. Well, the leech therapy. Yeah, her and Gwyneth Paltrow m- made it popular. When in a, in a kind of meeting in New York where they uh, leached, Miranda mentioned that she gets leeches and she does leech therapy. She gets leached and then they put the blood from the leeches onto her face. And the story goes that she kept the leeches in her backyard in a pond. And so I I, I tried to go to Miranda Kerr, right? And, mm-hmm. and of course, she did not want to be a part of the film. Of so I went to Miranda Kerr's leech therapist yeah. in California. And so I'm on the sort of bed yeah. and she's putting these leeches on my stomach and they grow six times the size. They're basically just eating you. They pump a coagulant into you yeah. and suck your blood out. And then what I didn't expect is she literally just like wringing out a towel my blood and then reapplies it onto my face. What? Tony, why do you need the leeches? Why can't you just use a syringe and r- remove some blood and then stick it on your face? <laughs> like, what does the leech good, part do? Good, good question. Uh, so the, so the, <laughs> the, the leeches have enzymes within them that they put into the blood that right. are meant to be a beauty enhancer. Gotcha. So, oh, so with the blood on its own is not enough. No. You need whatever no. the leech has in it to kind of the cause saliva some of the chemical leech. reaction. Ugh. So then you yuck. just lay there with blood on your face. That dries out. How long does that go for? <laughs> don't know how long it took. Yeah, but have a but look at you. Let you me look tell beautiful. you, I know, and I never felt better. Uh, getting it off. So uh, my conclusion is I'm not certainly just do anything yeah. for you, yeah. other than in surgery. So leeches are used successfully in surgery in Australia, around the world, as an uh, anticoagulant when people are um, getting you know limbs yep. removed or whatever. So absolutely used scientifically. 
not cosmetically. Right. All I know is that it, the blood coagulated on my face, dried me out completely, and it was like sandpapering it off. So I got exfoliation. So afterwards, I said to camera, I, I do. My skin looks great. It's because I basically sandpapered one yes, layer of off. Yeah. Gotcha. But they kind of dress it up with all of these other things, and then in turn, we're talking about it, and you can charge a lot of money. I mean, when you're talking about cosmetics, that I mean, the leeches, that's only one element of these things that you see, and I'm fed it every day on my socials. You need to do this. You've got some 22-year-old with amazing skin because they're 22 saying, I look like this because I've done this and you Mm -hmm. can also look like me. What are the most dangerous things out there floating around? There's plenty. Uh, I I think that... I think, as you said, Kate, I I think the industry is built on people's insecurities and fears. Mm. And people will try almost anything. Uh, And there's, uh, in the first episode tonight, uh, well, it doesn't end well. It's it's a... Right. Someone someone dies. Uh, Oh, God. uh, And and they're treating cancer with alternative therapies. And I'm not against alternative therapies for cancer. And I, I've never had cancer, and uh, you'll see in the story they talk a lot about chemo and the issues with chemo. But this person has substituted uh, it for bee therapy. Right, for bee therapy. Bee sting therapy. Bee sting. Right. Bees. That, uh, would, that would kill. Yeah. Well, it did. And it's, it's, right. it's dangerous. And, and the issue is that the majority of doctors online. So we get more medical and health information mm. from three people than all the doctors combined. Joe Rogan, Gwyneth Paltrow, yeah. and Kim Kardashian. Yeah. Those people combined have more reach than every doctor on earth. That's, That's so yeah, not, not only reach, That's, but power. Yes. Mm. So if you think about uh, Kim Kardashian, so she has 360 million followers. The World Health Organization, 10. Okay. Yeah. Like that's what you're dealing with. Thanks. And so the, the show is trying to highlight what works for wellness, what doesn't work for wellness, but also the sort of misinformation that yeah. surrounds it all. It's a yeah. great topic. It, it, it's funny you t- you talk about that a lot of these things try and attach themselves to you through either low self-esteem or you wanting to be better or more amazing. And I have to say uh, quite a serious <laughs> story for me that I, I've, I had a procedure once upon a time and I remember thinking, you're right, you'll often do things that you wouldn't do in your other... I'm, I'm quite conservative. I wouldn't... I'm not a risk taker, but as far as like chasing this um, the vial of youth or whatever it is that you want, all of a sudden you're agreeing to things with someone that you've probably never met. You never. don't even know if yep. they're qualified and you're doing things that you wouldn't normally do. And I, uh, on this one occasion, I remember lying on the bed having something done. I won't go into that part of it. Mm. And during the procedure, crying because my head noise was thinking... This is wrong. What am what I, I doing? doing? Yeah. And and my self esteem, in actual fact, was further damaged because not only was I trying to aspire to to something that was probably unattainable, but I also felt bad about the fact that I I was doing, doing this to myself mm. in order to to get to be. Yes, and disproportionate amount of the marketing and focus of wellness is on women, yeah. and uh, for that very very reason, it's also disproportionate amount of advertising in general yeah, sure. uh, is, is focused on women. And one of the areas, Kate, that we cover in the film that a lot of women will relate to is detoxing. Mm. I mean, detoxing is beyond the actual scientific medical use, is a marketing construct. Yep. And you'll see in this film, this young woman who is who is seriously suffering She's doing a detox to help Mm. her mental health. Mm. Uh, That is like piling one trauma onto another Mm. trauma. Doesn't make any sense. I also get an enema in the film, which is trauma for everyone watching. (laughs) Oh, my God. Uh, Yeah. Not recommend it. Gwyneth does a couple of strange things, too, doesn't she? So Gwyneth, Gwyneth, so a lot of people now have written about saying, "Oh, I hate Gwyneth." I don't hate Gwyneth Paltrow. I, I, I don't even know that much about Gwyneth Paltrow, yeah. other than her godfather is Steven Spielberg. But she has created a wellness business, the yep. biggest wellness, arguably one of the biggest wellness businesses in the world. I, I think it's upwards of three hundred million dollars, yeah. and primarily she is selling hope, and primarily she is selling pseudoscience. Right. Um, you know, I, I know it goes without saying, but Steamers. vaginal, vaginal steaming is not good. It's Jade dangerous. eggs, putting rocks in your vagina is not good. Thank so God so you, you said that. So you did that on the oh show God, as well? Oh, God, I'm going to have well, to step we went, out of the studio, guys. <laughs> yeah. 
I noticed, Kate, so you're, she's you're shifting around in the chair there. Yeah, can we okay. turn that steamer off, please? Um, Todd, we love you. Oh, we could talk to you all day. I have so many oh questions. Oh, my God. Oh, I'm so excited about this. It's tonight, 7.30 on Channel 10. Make sure you watch it. Mirror, mirror, are you well? Toddy Sampson, thanks for coming in, legend. Thanks for having me. Thanks, buddy. The Fitzy and Whipper with Kate Ritchie Podcast. What are we? Just over a month till Christmas? Yeah. yeah. Just over a month. It's around oh. the corner. Are you organising presents already? Yeah, I am. I, I, you know, the family we've got sorted. But, um, Kate Ritchie, we've decided to get you a present. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. You don't need to do that. Are you doing this? Because yesterday I bought Christmas treats for my jar on the office well, desk. You did. You bought in candies, candies and, and chocolate little balls. caramello like caramel. Balls. Caramel. Oh. Mm. Yeah. I've come into the office and the the jar lid is a jar. Yes, oh. it is. And you had a mouthful of chocolate. I had a couple so, of caramel so, balls you. in my mouth. You I'm don't sure. need to feel bad about that. I don't need anything for Christmas. Oh. No, no, no. We've we've got a special guest that just wants to um, have a bit of a chat to you. And I thought, oh, no, why don't we have? feel a bit sick. How, why don't we chat to this young lady just to see if Kate can pick up who it is, but there, there is something that they would like to offer you. Are you there? I am. Okay. Um, now, have you got something for Kate as a Christmas present next week that you can reveal to her right now? And Kate's got to work out who it is. Uh, I'm returning back to Campbelltown to see my family <gasps> for Christmas. <laughs> Kate, um, and Kate, hosting an event in Sydney. Kate, who is it? I oh, know, she's I getting know. emotional. It's okay, you don't need to write her name down. I'm I not... know that it's Alana Kennedy. Oh, oh my God. It's yes, it Alana Kennedy. We got her. The Campbelltown Girls Unite. Oh, oh it's so nice to see you. I'm back. <laughs> she's back. <laughs> now, Alana, this is big because next week is big and you want to get as many people here to this one, but what have you got for us? Yeah, so uh, December 21st, we're hosting an event, myself, Mackenzie and Mary, called Open Air Live, where we're going to going to be interacting with fans basically giving them a almost like a game day like experience showing off a bit of skills some q uh, and a i guess and um and just reliving some of the the world cup moments with everyone there who who really embraced us and so looking forward to the opportunity to give back to, to everyone and hopefully see you there kate you and may yeah, yeah so what's the, what's the present do you need me to come down and get, show some skills is that what you call it <laughs> yeah we we're, <laughs> we're gonna ask if you could stand in goal I will take penalties penalties against oh. you. <laughs> and Mackenzie can throw you through. I would love to watch that. Can we please oh, do that, Alana? No, you know what? You're all laughing like I wouldn't be able to cut the mustard, right? Yeah. But I think I would be quite good. Oh. I have been at the park with May. She received some um, soccer boots for her birthday in August and she's looking at playing a bit of footy next year and yeah. doing a soccer camp over the Christmas holidays. So, I mean, I'm not saying I'm quite up to stand. <laughs> no, yeah, I, but I, you know, I, I've got I to did look- see the cricket. I saw the cricket with um with yeah, Courtney Vine. Courtney, Courtney yeah. was there. Yeah. Yeah. She, she was. Yeah. She was great. Um, but this is a great way to say thank you to everyone that supported you, ladies, in the World Cup, Alana. And I do love this. And you'll get you'll get an amazing crowd. So it is at Combank Stadium. It's Thursday, twenty first of December. You can get your tickets right now at Ticketek. But you know what? You're giving Kate a VIP experience with May on the day, and we're going to give five of our listeners. Listeners a VIP experience now, right Done. now. Oh, wow. 13 2014, if you would like to win those VIP meet and greet tickets, give us a call right now and you can get involved. So you'll be down there with the fans, Alana. You'll be having a kick out in the ground. What else will you be doing on the day? Ultimately, we just want to be able to interact. Um, like I said, relive some of those moments um, on the big screens um, together. And, and just interact in ways that I guess you, it's, it's so hard after games to be able to see everyone and really... I guess get to know us on more of a personal level. So I think we'll just be delving into a little bit more of our individual journeys as well. Alana Kennedy, you are a superstar. And for everyone else, you can get your tickets at Ticket Tech Thursday, 21st of December at Combank Stadium. Alana Kennedy, Mackenzie Arnold, Ma- Mary Fowler, they will reunite for Open Air Live. You are a legend and enjoy your time with Kate and May. And thanks for coming on the show. Thanks, guys. See Lovely it. to chat to you again. Say hi to your mum. <laughs> Thanks, Alana. We'll Bye-bye. do. She'll love that. We'll do. <laughs> Bye. The Fitzy and Whipper with Kate Ritchie Podcast. What are the chances? These are the stories of coincidence, chance and coincidence. You said it, buddy. That blow people's minds. 13, 20, 14, get involved. Adam in Bayview, what are the chances, mate? Mate, the chances... 
The Jets are amazing. So I uh, took this 52-hour flight to Peru and it had a flight issue and we were sitting next to this guy that was like literally the... Latino version of Ray Romano. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The flight comes the flight comes down. We have to spend the night because it's it's got an issue. Anyway, we make it to Peru. I spend about a month and a half going through Peru. Yeah. I then jump back on the plane to go back to Australia and this guy walks up and sits next to me. Hey Adam, how you doing? It's <laughs> the same the guy. A month and a half later, same seats, Adam. That's it. Same seats on the way to Peru, same seats on the way back. Wow, Adam, what, are the d- what are the chances? the chances that he I'm worked me. for ASIO and he was actually a spy following you? <laughs> <laughs> it could happen, you never know, you never know. Yeah, well, he was going to source something over there, Adam, in Peru. He was perusing in Peru. Good story, Adzi. <laughs> Emma in Campbelltown, what are the chances, Em? Hey, so the chances are, so my media family, we immigrated to Australia when I was a little girl. My gran lived in England, and she was coming over to Australia from holidays. So she goes to her bridge club. She's chatting to this little lady called Betty. She says to Betty, I'm going to holidays to see my son who lives in Australia. Betty says, hey, my son lives in Australia. Oh. So my gran says, hey, my son lives in Sydney. Betty says, my son lives in Sydney. Yeah. So gran says, my son lives in Bradbury. Betty says, my son lives in Bradbury. No so gran contacted my dad and says, do you know Betty's son? Turns out Betty's son, Tony, lives on the corner next to us. Both the dads know each other. Both of their sons, who is my brother, yeah. have known each other since they were little and are best mates the whole way through primary school and high school, are still friends 40 years later. Wow. So Betty ended up booking the same flight to Australia. They travelled together so they wouldn't be lonely and travelled on their own. And Ben and, ben and Grady, sorry, Gran and Betty, they remain friends and for the rest of their lives in England. What a story! Oh, oh, yes. Over a game of bridge, Emma. Yeah, they just went to a game of bridge and they realised that, hey, guess what? Our sons know each other and our grandsons are best mates. And, and, and do that do that bit again where you say, oh, my son lives in Bradbury. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Can you imagine two little old ladies? Well, my son lives in Bradbury. Well, my son lives in blah, blah, blah. There's that like, bit again. So cute. Emma, I Absolutely. love that. Oh, I, love I really it. love that story. <laughs> what are the chances? Well told too, Em. Lisa and Maroubra, what have you got? Oh, hi there. I don't think I can compete with Emma, though. That was pretty impressive. Give us a go. Um, Yeah, so my boyfriend was from England. He came over and we took a trip to Noosa and then four-wheel drive up to um, Fraser Island. Yep. And we're in there for two days, one night in one bar, and we happened to sit next to a guy that my English boyfriend at the time went to school with. So... We were only in this bar one night, and he happened to see one of his good mates. Didn't know he was in Australia, and happened to be on Fraser Island. In, fr- oh, in Fraser Island, like, like I mean, yeah. the odds in fr- like there's, there's not many people there. No, no. more dingoes no. instead exactly. of people. Exactly. Exactly. That's a good story, well, Lisa. Thanks, I like it. Lisa. Amy in Bass Hill. Yeah. What are the chances, Amy? Hi. Oh. Um, my cousin's van got stolen in Greenacre, and yeah. um, he was really upset about it because it was his work van. So we thought we'd get his mind off it and go to the movies for the night. We went through a, for a drive through the city, um, and we were coming down through King's Cross to go to Harry's and get a couple of pies. And he sort of frantically screamed out, stop, and spotted his van on the side of the road, jumped out of the car, had the keys in his pocket, jumped it and drove it home. Oh, you're kidding. <laughs> <laughs> he stole it back, Amy. <laughs> he stole it back. We got it back. That oh, that's awesome. awesome. Yeah, but don't you want to <laughs> yeah. see who comes out to see if they're going to jump into the car? I don't know if I do if they've stolen it from Greenacre <laughs> yeah, and true. taken it to the cross. And it's, and it's a van. Yeah. See, What's I, in the to van? see the look on the robber's face, yeah. I've been robbed. <laughs> and my gear's in the back. Yeah. I was selling stereos. This is a real tough one this morning. I, what are we going to do, Kate Ritchie? Well, I think it has to... I mean, for a story well told, and a, w- 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 what are the chances, it has to be Emma in Campbelltown. Emma, great story. You've got it. Hey, thank you. Now thank some you story. So Fitzy and Whipper with Kate Ritchie is a Nova podcast. For more great comedy shows like this, head to novapodcast.com.au.